Welcome to another edition of Zeek in Action, the series that shows you tips and tricks on how to think about using the Zeek Open Source Network Security Monitoring Framework to accomplish your network security and network vigilance tasks. My name is Richard Baitlick and I will be your host today. I thought for today's edition that we would take a look at Zeek and the data it produces in comparison to a tool like Wireshark. Now I'm not here to say Zeek is good, Wireshark is bad, or Wireshark is good and Zeek is bad. Rather I'm going to try to share a few thoughts on what the what each tool provides or even what what each data source provides and how that might be able to solve your problems. Um, during my years of teaching and uh, practicing network security monitoring, I encountered uh, other practitioners and students who weren't quite sure what tool was best for the job or what data source was best for the job. So that's the spirit that I'm going to be approaching today's, uh, today's video. Um, now, what you need if you'd like to follow along, uh, if you'd like to try to replicate some of the, uh, the analysis and, and surveying that I'm doing today, we'll be using Brim. Um, by the way, this is on Windows. If you can't tell, it's probably pretty obvious. But we'll be using uh, Brim to look at our Zeek data. And uh, you can reach it at brimsecurity.com. Of course, I mentioned Wireshark, so we'll be using Wireshark. And that's available at wireshark.org. And the sample packet captures we're going to be looking at come from the TCP replay, replay project, and they're available at the uh, the URL listed here. If you're not familiar with TCP replay, it's it's another one of these old school tools that you can use to um, take a saved packet capture and then to replay it onto a live network, as well as lots of other capabilities it has. So. To that extent, uh, we have a few different PCAPs to choose from here. Um, I'm going to first open one of these PCAPs in Wireshark, and we'll see what it looks like. So I've already downloaded them, and I'm just going to double-click on test.pcap because my Windows file association will launch Wireshark when I do that. Now I notice that uh, my w default Wireshark installation, the display of the of the data, it probably doesn't match what you have if you're just using a stock out of the box Wireshark installation. Uh, a few of the changes I like to make. Oh, first, I keep the the number column because um, it's one of the most reliable ways for returning all of the data back to the original display format. And what do I mean by that? Is if I were to say click on the source column and I wanted to sort my data back into the original um, listing, the number column is the easiest way to do that. You might be able to use the time column, but if the if the timestamps are off for some reason or there's some other sort of issue with the trace, um, you may have some issues. So I use the, uh, the number column. Now the time column here I've customized to show uh, year, month, day, and then time in UTC. Um, the source uh, IP address or MAC address as the case may be. It may look normal but I've turned it off any name resolution so for example this doesn't get resolved into um, some type of identifier to tell you what the first three um, components of that MAC address might be. I've added the source port column because uh, I like to see essentially the, all five elements of the tuple um, that appear in, in TCP IP so source IP, source port, dest IP, dest port, and protocol. And again, you can see destination IP address, destination port unresolved, and then the protocol. I've removed the length column. Really don't care so much about that. Just a personal preference. And then finally, we have all the information that's here. Now, we opened up this trace, and the question becomes, well, what are you trying to do with it? And that's really at the heart of, of everything we're doing with network security monitoring. Um, yeah, it's fun just to open up traffic and to tool around it and, and see what it has. But uh, at the end of the day, um, are you doing it just for fun? Are you doing it to accomplish uh, a mission? Do you, is this part of your, your work? You know, what's the purpose for, for taking a look at this data? And that really will drive what tool you want to use or what interface you want to use or what data you want to use when you're doing any sort of uh, network security monitoring task. So uh, I, I have had occasions in, in the past in my career where I was provided with a, a, a trace, a network trace, and told, see if there's anything suspicious here. 
perhaps it was a time delimited trace that was uh, taken as a sample from a site and someone wanted to find out if I could find anything that maybe they hadn't noticed. Um, in other cases, maybe there was something suspicious in there and they just, uh, you know, the customer wanted a second look, of, uh, second set of eyes to take a look at it. Um, so the question becomes, well, what are you supposed to do here? Um, you know, right off the bat, I can see that there's some TCP traffic. Um, am I just supposed to scroll down and look at this? Um, you know, the, 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 there's sort of a, a question as to, as to how do I proceed? Now, if you have some, some pointers, like take a look at this IP address or look for traffic that meets this other criteria or look at uh, traffic that occurs within the specific time frame, then you can zoom in on that. And that's, of course, what Wireshark is really awesome at. It's providing you, you know, the exact details regarding what you're looking at. So, in other words, if you want to see exactly what this ARP request looks like, here it is. And, uh, you know, the beautiful thing about Wireshark is, is it decodes it for you. So you don't have to memorize all this stuff. Um, you can simply look and say, okay, you know, here's a broadcast address and um, whatever. And here's, here's it, the, uh, apparently this is an Apple device because Wireshark is, uh, has populated the fields that will translate uh, these elements of the, of the MAC address into uh, known as being part of the Apple manufacturer. So all that's great. Now there's um, a few things you can do with with Wireshark. And before I get to Zeke, but uh, there's a few things you can do with Wireshark in order to get a little a little bit more of a higher level view of of a trace like this. So for example, uh, you could go to statistics and go to uh, conversations, and this will give you a view of the traffic that is starting to look a little bit more like what you'd get out of Zeke data or perhaps out of the, the connection log. So for example, if I click on the IPv4 column, you'll see that I now have essentially four conversations um, between these different IP addresses. And you can get some packet and byte counts. Um, if I take a little bit closer look here, and I see, for example, let's see if there's any, there's no IPv6, but here, this is essentially something that looks similar to um, NetFlow data, where you have uh, source IP, source port, dust IP, dust port. Uh, there's no protocol here. Um, <clears throat> you'd have to make an assumption based on, um, well, you know that it's TCP, so I guess that's the protocol. And the underlying the protocol that's carrying, you can make some guesses based on the port numbers, uh, 443 being uh, TLS and port 80 being straight up HTTP. You've also got UDP conversations. So I imagine if you were someone who was trying to make an initial cut at a trace like this, you could potentially take a look at the conversations format. And uh, honestly, before I, I even really knew what Zeek was, but I did know what uh, Ethereal and then Wireshark was, I was able to use this sort of data to get a high-level overview of what might be in a trace before I even looked at it in any type of interface. And I wrote an article years ago about, about how to do that, particularly using T-Shark uh, or Tethereal. So I would get a, a text-based output over, of an overview of what's in a trace before I was... Um, looking at it in, in a, a graphical interface. So let's take a look at this same traffic in, in Brim. And I believe we're looking at the test PCAP here. So Brim is going to process this PCAP and it's going to create Zeek logs and I believe by default it will also create uh, Suricata events. We're not going to be paying attention to the Suricata events today. Um, that's another sort of uh, data source that you could look at, and we've looked at that in previous uh, Zeek in Action videos. But for today, we're going to be looking at this trace and seeing what Brim and, and uh, Zeek has to make sense, or what, what they make, uh, if they can make sense of this data. Now, I could be tempted to follow the same sort of just sort of scroll through method that I got with Wireshark. Uh, and because the Zeek data format is conversation oriented, uh, you do have a lot less to look at, right? So if I just sort of scroll down, you'll see that that's it, right? We're looking at maybe th three scroll bars worth of, worth of information here, where if I go back to my uh, test up PCAP, um, what am I looking at? I'm looking at 141 individual frames. 
So if you wanted to simply scroll through here, you could do that. And it's really not that, not that difficult. And the reason why that is, is that when Zeek data is, is worked with, or when one person is working with Zeek data, you're using uh, essentially a summarization of the activity. Um, this isn't true for all protocols. Some protocols tend to be more, um, they, they, they result in more fields being created uh, or more entries being created in sort of that, that linear format. Um, but say, for example, a TCP connection, like all of this activity here, all this TCP activity that's involving the same port. So it's, it's part of the same flow, 64585 and port 80. In fact, if we could just follow that. Um, you know, here's the activity you'd see here. Um, these, what are we looking at? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. These ten frames result in being a single entry in a Zeek log. Uh, th it would be a, a connection log entry, and probably there should, there'd also be an HTTP log entry because we're looking, in fact, here it is, um, 64585, 64585. So this HTTP conversation that occurs on port 64585, we end up with an HTTP.log entry for it, and we end up with a con.log entry for it, which if I scroll up here, we can probably find it. Uh, actually, hmm, we're looking at the logs upside down. Um, if I were to sort, let's change the sort method here. There we go. Now the uh, the oldest event is at the top and the newer events are at the bottom. Um, so 64585, there's my con log for it. There's my HTTP log dot for it. So for this particular activity, Zeek produced two logs, a con log and an HTTP dot log. And Wireshark, because it's frame oriented, it re reproduces every frame that it sees. And in this case, we have 10. Now, if the activity that was represented by that conversation was more complicated, so for example, if it were encrypted, you might get a, a SSL.log entry, you might get an X509.log dot, dot entry. So you start getting more log entries per conversation. And in that case, you start to uh, you know, the ratio of activity represented in Zeek versus activity represented in Wireshark begins to change. But you can easily see that if you had a, a lot of activity, this ratio really is going to work in your favor when you're looking at Zeek data. So in that respect, why don't we open up one of these larger traces and see um, if I can demonstrate what I mean by that. So I'm going to open up a new trace, and I'm going to open up this... I'm just actually I'm going to open up the small flows. Take a look at that one. And I'm also going to open it up in Wireshark. And I'm going to turn off this filter because I don't want to just see stream 5. All right, so now we're looking at a trace that has, in Wireshark at least, it has uh, over 14,000 frames. So even though this is the small trace, this is like a 10 meg trace, I didn't even try opening up the 300 meg plus trace. Already you can see that this small trace has reduced, has created um, many frames we're gonna look at. Now let's go into Brim and we'll see what Brim has to make of it. And we'll go ahead and we'll ref refresh that. I'm gonna turn that off. Go into small flows. There we go. So Brim is still processing this trace. But, by the way, I love the visualizations in Brim. If I were to do sort of my same quick little look at this activity and just scroll down, you can see already there's way more activity here. So this sort of just scroll and, and poke around is really not going to work when you start getting into a large trace like this. Um, the same is true of, of Wireshark, right? I mean, I don't know anybody who's going to be able to make sense of activity like this just looking at thousands upon thousands of frames. Now, I could try the same the same trick here. It's not a trick, it's just an 
analytical method. I could come up here into the statistics and look at my conversations and see what I have to work with. And I can see that um, we're actually looking at 485 TCP sessions, 147 UDP sessions. So that's kind of, you know, that's helpful. But the difference between a tool like Wireshark and one like uh, Brim that's showing Zeek data is that I don't really get a chance to to look at more details on this unless I find the, the session of interest and I drill into it individually. Um, let me look at Brim here and I'm just going to click on this activity overview. And now I think this is where you start to see something that is really representing the power of, of uh, something like data that is represented in, in Brim. Here we have a listing of the file types that Zeek has created. So for example, we have 696 connections in the con.log. log. Of those, we've got 565 that are HTTP. Um, we've got a certain number of files that were extracted from that, or at least we have file uh, log entries. Uh, we've got SSL and so forth. So this to me shows how immediately I get a better sense of what I'm working with when I'm able to use something like um, Zeek data in an interface like Brim versus Wireshark. Now, don't get me wrong. If I need the actual details about a certain frame, so for example, I really need to know, let's scroll down just a tiny bit here. I really need to know what this frame looks like on the wire with the get request and so forth. You cannot beat this form of, of full packet capture data. I mean, sometimes this is what you need. And in fact, if I want to get the um, transcript for this activity, and I do a follow TCP stream. Here I have my get request from the client, and here I have how the server responded. I just, I'm not going to get this level of detail out of a Zeek log because that's not what Zeek was designed to do. It could do this if we wanted it to, but that would really be inefficient. Better to capture this data using uh, a full, pack, full packet capture mechanism and to have it available for, for analysis using something like, like Wireshark. Now, let's, let's go the distance. I wasn't sure I was going to do this or not, but you know what? Let's go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead and import this big flows, which is almost 360 megs. And let's see what it, what uh, what Brim can make of it. And I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to open it up in Wireshark. And I'm not even sure this was such a great idea. Because take a look at the uh, down here. It's going through the packets. And it is taking a while. We'll see how this goes. Let's see how Brim is faring. Brim is chugging through it as well. Who will finish first? We don't know. We'll find out shortly. Now, I could probably work with other traces while I'm here. Uh, for example, I could go into one of my other displays. In fact, why don't we just poke around here a little bit and take a look at some of this. I don't know... I, this is actually be, uh, a good question for the for those of you who are still with me. If you use other aspects of Wireshark, like the conversations field, I would like to hear about it. Leave a comment. Uh, let us know what you use it for. Do you, do you use it in production? Do you use it for your own um, analysis methods? How do you use that sort of, of data? We'll close that. Which one will finish first? Looks like Brim is going to finish first here. Wireshark, oh, Wireshark's close. We'll see what we get. Of course, partial data is available, it says. So I'll go ahead and refresh that. And I'm going to go back to the overall view of what's in big flows. There's big flows. Ah, and the import is complete. Look at that. Wireshark finished at the same time, too. So that's pretty impressive. OK, let's see what we're working with. I'm going to turn off that filter from the last display. Oh, it has to rescan. Come on, work laptop, you can do it. This is something I don't think we're going to see with uh, Brim. 
And again, this isn't tool versus tool. This is just more sort of a sense of the data that we have to work with. Now, in terms of the number of frames that have loaded, what are we looking at here? We're looking at over 79,000 frames that have loaded into Wireshark. So again, this is a situation where, unless you know what you're looking for, uh, you know this could be this could become somewhat difficult. Um, Brim, however, we'll come in here. Let's do an activity overview. Excellent. So right away, I can see some activity that I didn't see in the in the earlier traces. So for example, this trace has server message block traffic. So for example, you see here. DC RPC, NTLM, SMB mapping, Kerberos, SMB files. Um, I got that simply by being able to look at this activity overview. And let's see if I have anything else that might be interesting. Um, how about just taking a look at the HTTP requests? So here's a list of all the HTTP requests. Yes, I could get something like this out of Wireshark, um, but remember these these um, entries are being parsed out of Zeke's HTTP.log. So uh, that's something else to consider when I, I wonder if I can pivot to this. Yeah, I can pivot to it now. There we go. Um, these are individual logs that Zeke has created. I'm not working with the frames as I would be with Wireshark. I'm looking at a new log type. Um, so for example, let me see. Let's open the details on this guy. So apparently I've got some, some other logs that are associated with this particular connection. So I've got these this HTTP.log, then I've got the files and more HTTP.logs. Here's one of the cooler things I think about, uh, about Brim is the ability to take a look at all this stuff like that. Um, let's look at the Windows networking activity. This will get us uh, taking a look at some of the HTTP. And let me just make sure, okay, let me reverse the timestamps here. All right. There's my SMB mapping, my SMB files, etc. Now again, this data is available in Wireshark because if it's on the wire, Wireshark will give you a chance to look at it. Um, I guess the point I'm trying to make is that when you have access to more of a conversation-oriented system, like you get out of Zeek data, it may make it easier for you to find activity that would be of interest. Some people call that hunting. Uh, I don't prefer to use the term hunting unless I actually have a hypothesis and I make a, an educated assessment about what it is I'm trying to find and I'm not just simply scrolling around through data. So I hope this uh, edition of Zeek in Action gave you a sense of the differences between the data you get out of a tool that renders full full content data, full PCAP, for example, in Wireshark, where it's a frame-oriented system, and it is useful if you have an individual frame that you want to follow and take a close look at. Um, oh, look at that. I loaded a giant frame, apparently, because you can see it's working on loading down here. So that's one of the issues, right? You start working with a large trace, and you're not quite sure what it is you're trying to find, and you end up with just simple logistical issues of trying to uh, access the data. Whereas it perhaps if you were to start with a data source um, more like Zeek, you're able to get more of a high-level overview. You can still pivot into details, and if it turns out that you need frame-level details or byte-level details or nibble-level details, which is half a byte in, uh, when you're looking at Wireshark data, um, then you can pivot into Wireshark. So these two um, systems, these two data sources, these two tools work very well together, and I encourage anyone who's looking at network screen monitoring to add both of them to your arsenals. Uh, that's all for today. If you're interested in doing a Zeek in Action video, please feel free to visit the uh, Zeek project. Um, there's many ways you can get in touch with us. Um, join the community. Um, I, the way I enjoy interacting with, with those of you who have taken a look at these videos is, is using Slack. So please feel free to, uh, to find me there. Um, thank you for 
watching this video and I look forward to sharing more thoughts on Zeek and network security monitoring with you in a future video.